Hey everyone, welcome back to NetTuts. In today's video quick tip, we're gonna take a look at the HTML5 audio element and how we can work with it. So the first step is to create the format. So Firefox and Safari don't totally get along just yet. Uh, Firefox wants to see something like an OGG format. Uh, Safari and Chrome, those will be okay with MP3. So we need to make sure we make two versions of the same file. Uh, the tool I found was media.io. You can simply upload an MP3 file, select your format, in this case OGG is what we want for Mozilla, select a quality and convert, and that's it. You end up with two formats. So it's pretty simple. The next step is to go into TextMate. You can see the file I chose here is just an old, uh, the old NES Zelda music that I had from when I was a kid. So we'll use that. And the first step is create the audio elements. So we have the option of passing in source here and passing in a value. However, I found when I was using it that uh, that's not the best way with some browsers. Instead, we are going to use source as a child element. And the attribute is going to be source, and we pass in a path to the file. First one's OGG. And then we're going to do the same thing. Now, browsers that don't understand OGG uh, format, they will simply skip it and move on to the next one, which is exactly what we want. Now, once again, within the audio, we have attributes. We have auto buffer, auto play, and controls. So if we want to do auto play equals auto play. And let's go ahead and open up that file. And sure enough, it is playing like we would hope. Uh, we also have the option of passing in controls. Now we can actually get away with just typing in that controls attribute and leaving it like so, but it makes me feel more comfortable to uh, put in the value as well. And now you're going to see this, and you'll find that from browser to browser it renders slightly differently, uh, Safari actually being the worst of all of them. Chrome's the best, a very nice looking player there. Okay, so now let's see how we can do this dynamically. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to use jQuery, that's all we have time for. And let's create an anchor tag, and this will be just for like a click event. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this off the top of my head here. Let's see. Let's create closure. And uh, the first thing we'll do is listen for when the anchor tag is clicked. So a.click. We're going to run a function. And first things first, we want to make sure that we return false to disable the default action. And then uh, let's create a new variable called audio. And let's go ahead and create a new audio element. And uh, let's set some values to. Uh, this is going to be uh, autoplay, like we did earlier. And let's just set that to autoplay. Uh, the next step is we need to be able to add those source elements. So why don't we go ahead and create a function and we'll call it add source and it'll accept an element and a path to the, the file to load. And we'll simply within here create a new source element and we'll set its source attribute equal to path that we pass in. And then finally we want to append it to the audio element that we created above and that'll be represented by Lm. Whoops, e l e m, like so. Okay, and now we can come up here and just simply call that function add source to audio, and the first one is going to be Zelda.ogg, and then we can simply copy this and do it again. So there might be better ways. This is fine, uh, just for a quick two-minute tutorial. And uh, the final step, of course, is audio append to the page. And I think that should be good. So let's see how that works. Refresh, click it, and sure enough, it works. So I'm happy to talk more in the comments if you have a better way or different ways. And uh, I'm Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you next time. Bye.